I do. Well, I'm vegetarian. Sorry, we can't be friends. <laughs> I'm going to block you. Mike Levine, didn't you say you don't like turkeys? That's one of my favorite places in the world. I'm going to block you, too. <laughs> Phil Hebner, you talk about things I don't understand. What the heck is Bitcoin? <laughs> Rather than show my ignorance, I'm going to block you, too. <laughs> Oops. I'm running out of hands here. This is awkward. Well, fine. I'm just not going to look at you. <laughs> Isn't that silly? Of course it is. But during the 2016 election, that's exactly what Americans were doing on social media. Unfriending, unfollowing, and blocking people. Manmouth University reported that 7% of American citizens lost friendships during that election. I would venture to guess that the number on social media was a lot higher. How do I know? Because I was one of them. I unfollowed Patsy. I grew up with Patsy, and I respect her a lot. But I unfollowed her because I disagree with her politically. She's one of those Trump supporters. How many of you watched the World Toastmasters contest over the past weekend? If you did, you would have noticed something amazing. And I'm not talking about the content. I'm not talking about the delivery. All three speakers spoke along the same theme. It was a message of inclusion, of diversity, of withholding judgment. In 2016, Darren Tay delivered a world championship speech when he talked about a red dot and the white space and how we fail to notice the white space and focus only on the red dot. The red dot represents things that make us angry or annoy us. And the white space is all the good stuff that we overlook while we're focusing on this red dot. I unfollowed Patsy because all I saw was this red dot. I grew up with Patsy, so I know we have a lot in common. We both love live music. We're both geeks. She's a fashionista, and she loves tea. I want to emulate her, yet I unfollowed her because she didn't share my political beliefs. And I'm the only one who lost out. We, I don't see any reason why we should exclude people from our lives simply because we don't have the same beliefs. We need to have those difficult conversations. And one of the reasons why is because it forces us to think. When was the last time you really thought about your political beliefs? I'm not the same person I was 10 years ago. I'm not even the same person I was a year ago before I joined Bayview. But yet, we never investigate our political beliefs. So opening our conversation up and having that conversation sharpens our argument. Another reason not to back away from including people who are unlike ourselves is because it challenges us to become weak, become strong where we are weak. I've shared this example before, so it's something that we can all relate to. If Rob Murray and I were to work together on our speeches, we would be an unstoppable team. Our styles complement each other. I write out every word. I know every single <coughs> in my speeches. And the result is I often have a canned delivery. More than one evaluator has told me I need to add vocal variety to my speeches. Yet here comes Rob waltzing on stage with his charismatic presence sounding very natural. If he takes up my challenge and we work together, I'm challenging you for the second time now, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> we would grow much faster than we would if we worked separately. So that, that cancels that well-known belief that you're the smartest person in the room. If you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the right room. Think of a physician. Even with all their academic training, they know very little about how to market themselves. So they would do well to hook up with an entrepreneurial type, which is a good segue into my last point. Innovation happens when, when diversity, we, it's, it's, we can change the world when, we are, when we're part of a diverse team. 
think of Eastern and Western medicine. The two of them often oppose each other. They roll their eyes at the thought of each other. But yet in recent years, they've become more open to communicating and learning from each other. And today we have integrative medicine. Serendipity happens when we look outside our bubble and notice each other's strengths. So let's join the three best speakers in the world I'm in. So I'm going to say, Bikram, I really appreciate your humor. It adds so much to every meeting. And here's the dependable table over here. Mike and Jeff, it takes a medical issue for you both to miss a meeting. <laughs> Thank you for always being here. And Stephen and Jennifer, who's absent, you pay attention to every word, and that's comforting when you're up here in the hot seat. Let's look at the white spot of our fellow baby Toastmasters, because what we appreciate grows. Let's take it one step further and emulate them. Madam President, I accept your challenge. Now I want everyone to stand and lock hands with someone next to you. Holly and Morrissey Pope. Can I get some Yes. Okay. Then you, Toastmasters, we're a team with diverse talents and strengths. We need each other. Together, we make an unstoppable team. Mr. Toastmaster, 